What's up guys, it's Tamp. So I wanted to today walk you through some general tips. Um, I'm now level 19. I've done a lot of stuff that I wish I would have done differently. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk talk through with you about today. Um, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be a longer video. Really it's catered to beginner and intermediate level players. So if you're level 20, you're probably not gonna pick up a lot of stuff from this. I mean, maybe you will, but most of this is catered from my experience from um, interacting with some of the moderators like Lady and Hendrix, um, talking to some higher level players like Boo Radley. What's up, Boo? Shout out. Um, and uh, getting some, some feedback just from the people that I played with in a, in a pretty tight knit group that we can pass on on things we wish we would have done differently had we been starting over um, all over again. So I'm going to start with some of the, the really uh, remedial level tips. So, first of all, um, I guess we're in Mosquito. You guys would know that. I've been here before. A um, couple things. As a newer player, this is the only place you can get free food. You can do this once a day. You just hop over here to the field kitchen and hit the E button, and you'll eat. This will fill up about probably between 80 to 85% of your food bar. So it's really, really helpful as you're trying to save money as a new player. Um, second thing is that as you're a newer player and you begin to shop around, gear is priced differently in different places so it's priced differently at the winding river that's one of the most cost effective places as a newer player that you can shop so if you can wait till level seven to buy things they tend to be pretty cost effective at the winding rivulet um, but generally speaking if you were to look at like my personal thing that i'm saving for right now um, whether it's in the tackle store or in the workshop same thing um, the thing i'm saving for right now is this bait bucket for my bait harvesting so if you click here, you can look to see how much the price is in gold. That's the price of just about as low as that item is going to go in silver. So where is its price? 967 here. At the river, it's probably 941 in silver. So it can save you a little bit of money by shopping that way as you begin to look for some of your gear. Uh, so we'll go back in the shop and I'll show you some of the more common things. Not everything's available for gold, so you can't always use that reference, but it's something that can help you as you begin to shop around and look for the best price. Um, like this Siberia, the uh, Saber is pretty, pretty common that people want. So it's 889 here. It looks like it could be just about as low as 867. That's probably again on the river where that price is. Um, but really what you're looking for is you want to be able to um, really price shop before you're pulling the trigger because some of the items that you buy you're gonna end up spending at anywhere between 5 and 10 silver more sometimes between level 7 and 12 as you're trying to get items that just doesn't make a lot of sense you, you want to try and save as much money as you can when it comes to that um, next tip that I have is as you make bread or as you buy bread so let's say we go over here to the shop and we buy bread you'll see that bread has four of four uses. So one of the things to keep in mind is using bread as one of the best foods is, is awesome because you can eat three of the four pieces and still use one of the four pieces to do your bait harvesting. So first of all, don't just craft a regular loafed bread for bait harvesting. What you wanna do is wait till it gets down to one of four and then craft it. I am still getting um, skill, an occasional skill point um, from crafting bread, and I am over 60%. So just by eating three or four loaves of bread, um, that's something I wish I would have done. Between level six and 12, I really switched to sausages, and I wish I just would have kept eating bread for the most part. That's just, you know, when you're standing around and, and doing some basic fishing you aren't fishing for big carp where you need a lot of energy because you really don't want to fill yourself up with with bread all the time when you're doing that but when you're fishing for smaller fish it really doesn't matter that much so that's a good way to level up your bait harvesting and your skill tree um and you know because i'll tell you when you start to get to making cottage cheese dough i had to make four thousand cottage cheese dough balls to get to the area where i could cut fish pieces uh so Anything you can do to move along as cheaply as possible is, is good advice. That's something I wish I would have done. Um, the next thing is you look and you're buying in the shop. Some people kind of bypass the importance of having a good quality hook. As you get into levels 8 to 10 and, and, and beyond that as you're hooking some of the bigger carp, uh, it's really important to look for, for the quality 
of the hook. So you see this one is one and a half stars. That's a lower quality hook. As you go to, you know, the circle hook that I prefer is three and a half. Um, you obviously can't afford that. So dollar per dollar, this happy hook is one of the most cost effective when it comes to, you know, quality and, and also the price. So this is one that I'd recommend uh, as you're beginning to invest in another set of gear before you're heading down to Old Berg Lake. Um, if you happen to get broken off as a new player, you can go to the cottage, and I'm not going to take you guys back there because you get a loading screen, but you can go to the cottage once a day and get this tackle in case you get broken off or in case you have something break your line on um, uh, the beginner rod that you're given. So that's in, you won't get this. Actually, you won't get this line. I'm sorry. I did that wrong. You'll get this line. Um, you'll get this set of tackle, um, and you can get that once a day at the cottage, which doesn't cost anything to go to. Um, I just posted a video a little bit ago, so if you're a new player, I'd recommend go watching that um, right after this, which is as you set your hook, one of the things you want to do with a float rod is look up as you're setting your hook. You want to place that tension bar right underneath the bobber, which I'll just show you guys just briefly. What you want to do is set your tension bar underneath the bobber and as that bobber goes under you want to look up as you're setting your hook that way you're able to see how we're picking up the slack and that allows you to get a better more consistent hook set um moving on to the next thing so playing with friends and, and being interactive in the twitch community can really help you there's a lot of um, players like myself that have premium and when you have premium you're actually able to send a lot of hand-me-downs like if you look through you know some of the messages all the stuff I've been sending out to players to uh, kind of help get them started that's something if you're part of the twitch community and you watch a lot of the twitch streams and you're active there or you're active in our discord um, we'll be happy to send you some stuff to get you started because we have more than enough worms from digging around to uh, save you at least a little bit of money as you're beginning to get your feet wet um, Looking on to some of the next beginner tips, uh, I would wait to do a lot of the bait crafting until you're able to price shop. So looking at your skill tree, you guys can see I haven't done a lot of ground bait um, and I haven't done a lot of the, I have done a lot of this, but I didn't do a lot of this at, at the beginning. Um, the reason why I would recommend not doing it, at least wait until you can get to level seven and go to the winding river where you can shop around for different prices. Um, because what you'll find is the price discrepancies can be pretty big as you go from place to place. So, for example, um, threaded loaves, I believe, at the river are 26 cents. So you can see there they're 29 cents. That's one thing that you can keep in mind that keep a notebook and use that notebook to write down some of the prices of the items that you're buying most commonly. Because there's going to be times where you go, well, what's price cheaper and is it worth it to go back? Um, doing the math usually pays off in the long run. Um, so moving on, kind of to the, the next level. So these are the, like the second level tips, is, which is probably begin around level 6 to 10. Um, as you're walking around and trying different spots, one of the things to keep in mind is you don't want to be really running near your baits. And I am terrible at it. I do it all the time. But making noise near your rods and reels means that you're going to lower the catch um, lower your ability to catch fish. So by running around and you accidentally step in the water and you begin to make those splashing sounds, um, that's one way that you'll scare some of the bigger fish. So try to be cautious around your rods. Don't just run around and, you know, oh, I got a fish on, I got to run right over to it, and then you splash in the water. Try and keep, I mean, it's pretty realistic in that. So just keep from making splashing sounds in the water because that does... Um, uh, affect your ability to catch some bigger fish. So here's another tip while we're here. If you guys listen for a second, can hear frogs. So you have the option to catch frogs, or a, I guess an increased chance. The closer you get to really loud frog noises, you can see how it kind of increases. This is one of the places I'd want to fish for frogs, as they're really loud right here. 
Um, you can catch them on a bloodworm or a fly with, I'd recommend a number 19 or a number 20 hook. That comes from Boo Radley. Shout out, Boo. Um, he's caught a ton of frogs. So with a fly, uh, you're going to make your uh, basically 17 centimeter depth on a float rod. As, so as uh, low as you, or as high as you can get that, that uh, bait, the better. Um, so moving on. So as we look at, at just some of the other ones, a, a really common question that comes up in chat is what is the best food to buy? Um, like dollar per dollar, what's the best food that you want to buy? Bread, personally, if you're going to do bait harvesting, is probably one of the better ones. A lot of people choose sausages um, because for you know a dollar you're getting ten, um, the ability to eat basically ten, ten times, which is pretty decent. So what I'd recommend if you're looking for something to 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 see what you want to do, just get your food bar all the way to the bottom and eat occasionally, and kind of write down in your notebook, you know, what you think how much you think you're getting from it and eventually you can divide it by price but I'll tell you common thought right now now there's gonna be more food that's gonna be added into the game is bread is really good um, you wanna buy some tea and make some tea when you need some quick energy um, when you go to land a bigger fish if you're able to kinda of control it you can pop some mold wine which is made by mixing one of these again not two just like bread you wanna drink one of these before you mix it, but you mix this port wine here with uh, the spices for, for mold wine. You mix that at a campfire, and it will give you not only a really nice bonus to comfort, especially when it's raining, um, it'll give you an energy boost, and on top of it, you get the tipsy bonus, which is an experience bonus you get when drinking alcohol. So coffee, tea, bread, um, those are some of the most, most common um, ones that are used. Uh, and obviously sausages uh, th that's that's what I'd recommend for now now as the, the new food comes out that may completely change so but bread because it's so versatile and being able to make that um, bait as well so it, as you look at some of the the common misconceptions that come up from intermediate players is there's hot spots there's not really hot spots the fish are gonna migrate but there are some places on a map consistently where you can tend to catch some bigger fish and usually they happen to be around where fish are at depth or at holes um, so one of the common places to fish here is actually right out I'll show you because it's pretty much right here is this channel as it changes depths so that's one of the things you would want to look for is there's a little bit of a drop off here most people aren't casting out all the way to the center of this um, most of them are fishing right along this channel, even off the edge of the dock. A lot of people fish this right here. So um, keep in mind there aren't hot spots, but if you look at your map and you kind of look around areas where you see holes or you see specific changes in depth that's really sudden um, or even gradual or typical good places to fish. There are some coordinates that are commonly known that you can bounce around between that are pretty helpful. Like on this one, 5645, where we just were, um, is a good one. This one's not bad. Over here across the campsite, there's lily pads right where we're looking at where that stick is that are pretty common. Um, the spot to the left of that actually has common carp, just so be careful. But there aren't really hot spots. Um, I would say fish for you know 10 to 20 minutes in a place. Change your baits a few times within that time frame. If you don't get bit, move, um, and then try again. Restart the process. Um, Another, another thing I guess I should talk about, guys, is as you look at going to buy gear between levels 5 and 7, a lot of people see that spinning rod that's uh, 1990. And my first assumption when I came into the game was it's a spinning rod. That's probably the natural progression of the game. They want me to buy that because it's 20 bucks. I'm going to buy it. Well, it's not something I would recommend. What I'd recommend is waiting. Um... So we'll go to rods here, and you'll see the spinning rod. So the spinning rod and reel together are about $28. Wait until you can afford the feeder rod, which ends up being about $46 here, or buy it at the river, it's even cheaper. Um, but the, the reason I say that is spinning rods are really complex to use. The lures tend to be pretty expensive. You don't have a great consistency with spin fishing here. At the river is significantly better. Um, so I would say just wait. Uh, don't ignore the spinning rod for now. 
Um, as you go into, again, some of the more advanced tips, and I, I haven't been able to confer this with an English moderator, but I guess we had a German moderator um, tell one of our viewers that if you put points in spinning reels, for example, uh, you have the ability to control the spinning reel much better, so you're less likely to take damage. Um, I don't know if that's true. I can't confirm that. You guys may want to ask a dev, but that was something I definitely thought that was worth mentioning. Uh, when it comes to color patter patterns on lures, so we look at some of our lures, uh, you're, you're typically looking for darker colors on cloudy days and brighter or more realistic colors on, on sunny days. That's something that is... I would say pretty much common that, that I utilize throughout the day. Some days it doesn't seem to apply, but overall I'd say that pretty much applies and is a good rule of thumb to try. But uh, most of us that are really trying to, to compile and maximize the amount of fish we catch, we kind of keep notebooks with uh, weather types and, you know, is it rainy, is it sunny, and what colors we're catching fish on. Um, you know, just red and a check mark or a hash mark whenever that happens. So that might be something you want to try. Um, kind of another one that's commonly asked is because I do a lot of digging on stream is does it matter where you dig so essentially no but if I was to dig here I'd have a lot less chance of catching worms than moving over to where there's probably a mud puddle or a rock or somewhere where there's a lot of green grass um, it, it, essentially it doesn't matter um, from an RNG perspective, I guess. You're, there's RNG will be RNG, but to maximize some of your opportunities to catch fish, stay away from doing it. You know, inside of the dock, or, or to catch bait rather, inside of that dock, or you know, on this cafe. It, that's definitely not some somewhere that you'd want to dig. So try and dig in places where it makes sense, and it tends to be a little bit easier to dig up some bait. That being said, if you do decide you want to do bait harvesting, um, this is another tip that came from Boo Radley. Uh, as you guys are looking at doing this skill, it takes a long time and it can be pretty miserable. So you'll notice that you have a free skill reset. Um, you get one of them. So if you have a skill reset, one of the things you can do is put your ability to get worms, put some skills, just max this out, and that will actually maximize your opportunity of getting worms every time you dig, which in turn maximizes your opportunity to get those additional little skill points every time you dig up worms. So that's something you want to consider if you want to go down that tree. Um, so the last thing is repairs. So as you go and you're looking at doing repairs, one of the things you want to keep in mind that as you do a repair, it's real life time, essentially. I don't want to say real life time, but as you look at repairing something, um, I don't even know if I have anything that's disassembled. I don't. So let's say we were, well, we can look at this walrus stick. So if we were to come in here and repair, um, the repairs will take 15 hours. So that's 15 hours in game. You can't be logged out. You do have to be in the game and you do have to be. Um, I guess you have to be just in the game. You can't be logged out. When you do log out, it does pause that um, that timer. So with that, guys, that's pretty much everything that I have on this list that I wanted to go over kind of early on. And I hope it helps you. Please let me know in the comments if you have any other tips you'd give to new players. I'll be compiling more videos as I come up with more tips and I talk to more people on things they wish they would have done differently and that they would share to the community. So um, anyway... With that, thanks for watching. Sorry for the length. I know it's a little long. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.